Hey guys, I think I've got a fun video for you. Here's the name of the video, guys. Don't fight the Fed. Don't fight the Fed is a famous saying known by investors across the world, okay? Basically, don't fight the Fed. If the Fed is trying to tighten uh, financial conditions, guys, don't think that we're gonna head into some type of boom time, all right? Don't fight the Fed. Don't go long on stocks when the Fed is trying to tighten financial conditions, when they're trying to contract the economy. Don't fight the Fed, but I'm adding something to it unless you are the US government. Here's the thing, guys. We have a business cycle. What that means is that we grow in booms and bust, okay? And we have two public sector actors, the Fed and the US government that control two different types of policies. The Fed controls monetary policy and the US government controls fiscal policy. And with those public sector actors, okay, the Fed and the US government controlling, again, monetary policy and fiscal policy, generally use those policies, or at least are supposed to use those policies to stabilize that business cycle. Remember that boom, bust, boom, bust. Generally speaking, guys, we go into booms, we expect them to do contractionary policies, okay? And curb that boom. And if we go into a bust, we expect them to do expansionary policies. We call these counter cyclical policies, okay? Going into that bus, do counter cyclical, counter that cycle, the, that downward cycle by doing expansionary policies, okay? But here is the deal. Right now in 2023, guys, the U.S. government is absolutely going full steam ahead with expansionary fiscal policy, even though the Fed is going full steam ahead with contractionary monetary policy. That's right. These two public sectors are ap sector actors are absolutely fighting each other. And it's kind of important to understand that because a lot of people are out there talking about how, hey, the Fed, what's going on? They're raising interest rates and raising interest rates and raising interest rates. And we're not seeing that curbing of the economy, that contraction of the economy. Why not? And the answer is because, again, the government controlling fiscal policy is doing tons of stimulus at the same time. Now, before we go into the weeds, and we're gonna get a little bit into the weeds, let's just talk about fiscal policy, okay? Now this graph is, or not graph, this visual might be a little bit confusing, but guys, stick with me, okay? It's actually very simple, the concept I'm trying to say. Here's the deal, when we talk about the government, we talk about controlling fiscal policy, what we're talking about is the government's budget. That means they're controlling the government's budget. What does that mean? They're controlling the inflows of money, which is tax revenues, and the outflows, basically expenditures, government expenditures. Generally, in an economics class, we call that that government purchases, which is all the things government does and all the things government purchases, and plus these things called government transfers, and the government just transfers money to people. So that's this side, the outflows, okay? Government expenditures. Here is the deal, guys. To the degree to which their expenditures are greater than their tax revenues, they are running deficits, and we say that is how much stimulus they're doing, how much expansionary fiscal policy they're doing. The size of the deficit re uh, reflects how much stimulus they're doing. In fact, there's a term for financing expenditures, this right here, this little portion right here, financing expenditures with borrowed money. Okay, so if you didn't get that, guys, I'm saying, and this is supposed to kind of look like what's going on in 2023, that our tax revenues are about that much right now, okay? From there to there are our tax revenues, but our total expenditures by our government is that much, that's right. From there to there is our expenditures. What does that mean? That means this much of our expenditures are financed by tax revenues. That is not expansionary. That is not what we would call stimulus. But this amount of our government spending right there is financed by borrowing. That is our amount of what we call deficit spending, spending of our government financed by deficits. And the size of your deficit spending, the amount of your deficit spending, the amount of your spending financed by borrowing is the amount of stimulus you are doing. I love to tell students that, guys. If you're thinking about expansionary fiscal policy, what we are talking about is the amount of deficit spending the government's doing. If the amount of deficit spending the government's doing increases, they're doing more stimulus. And how could that happen? They could reduce tax revenues, that would be stimulative, okay? Because that would increase the amount of deficit spending, the amount of spending financed by borrowing. Or they could increase the expenditures. Also, expansionary fiscal policy, okay? So, how much fiscal stimulus is our government doing? How much expansionary fiscal policy are they doing? Look at the size of the deficit spending. Look at the size of that deficit right there. Now, here's the deal. The Fed, 
They control monetary policy, which means they influence interest rates in the economy. The Fed, again, if they want to do stimulus, would lower interest rates, lower interest rates, hoping to get more spending, private sector spending out there, household business spending out there, okay? Or if they're trying to cool the economy, they raise interest rates, trying to reduce the amount of private sector spending, household spending, and business spending. Now, here's the deal, guys. In the last couple of years, as most of you know, inflation got really high. And the Fed said, hey, that's our number one job, really. They have two, okay? They're, they have a dual mandate. They want to keep full employment and price level stability. But really, kind of the Fed number one job, really, in their heart of hearts, is they need to make sure we don't have inflation. So when that inflation ticked up, the Fed said, I'm going after it. I'm going to bring that inflation rate down. But here is the interesting thing. The U.S. government decided to do even more stimulus. That's right. We have a ton of stimulus going on at the same time. Now, I'm going to bring up some data in this video, guys. Pay attention to it. I think it's quite interesting if you look at it, okay? Here is the deal, okay? I'm going to take you back in time. <clears throat> Excuse me. Take you back to 2000, 2000 and 2001. Look at that unemployment rate, guys, very low. You might think the natural rate, our full employment rate of unemployment is around 5%, somewhere in that neighborhood of 5%. Hey, we're doing great, 4%, 4.7%, and look at that. Those are positive numbers. That's right, that says deficit percentage, but they're positive numbers. What I actually I'm meaning by that, okay, is that we're running surpluses. Is that right, 2000 and 2001, we ran surpluses. That is not stimulative. So. Unemployment rate, really low, okay? Very little slack in our economy, okay? And what I mean by that is we don't have a lot of idle resources because we're at full employment or better. And guess what? The, fiscal, the government's doing what we expect them to do. They're not running deficits at all. There's no stimulus going on. Now, 2002, 2003, basically at the end of 2001, we kind of fell into a recession, okay? And you can see that unemployment rate ticking up. Okay, we got some idle resources. We should probably see some fiscal stimulus, and we do. It goes up to 1.4, and then goes to 3.3%. Totally normal, nothing big on 2002, 2003, all right? But then, guess what? We start recovering from that recession. It wasn't a big recession. Unemployment starts dropping, and look at that. There's those uh, deficits starting to drop down. Yeah, 3.4, but then back to 2.4. And then you get into that 2006-2007 era. Okay, economy's great. Back under the full employment rate of unemployment, guys. And take a look at those deficits. Nice and low, right? Less than 2% of our economy, okay? 2008 comes, okay, and what happened? The economy got worse. We all know that. The beginning of the Great Recession, you see that unemployment rate tick up, and there you go. The deficits tick up. And by 2009, guys, we're in the heart of that Great Recession unemployment high, a lot of idle resources. We expect to see a lot of stimulus and that's what we did. We did a lot of stimulus. Look at that, 9.8%, a lot of stimulus. Unemployment rate stayed elevated for a long time. We continue to do stimulus. Guys, this is what we expect to happen. High unemployment rates, idle resources, government's gonna do a lot of stimulus, trying to get those people back hired again, okay? Trying to get that economy, more spending equals more production equals more hiring. I love to say that. More spending equals more production equals more hiring, right? So you're seeing that, nothing abnormal. By 2014, guys, those unemployment rates, not quite down the natural rate, but back down 6.2%, and the deficit back to 2.8%. Very reasonable. Unemployment rate keeps dropping. Deficits stay fairly low. But then in 2016, interesting, right? That unemployment rate continues to tick down, but the deficit goes to 3.1. And then 2017, guys, the unemployment rate continues to kick down. That means the deficit should be shrinking. We should be not doing so much expansion. It's up to 3.4%. 2018, the unemployment rate, rate gets down to 3.9. That's fantastic. And yet, there it is. That deficit expands up to 3.8. Our government is doing stimulus, guys. 2019, the unemployment rate down to 3.7. This is fantastic economic times. But look at that deficit. This doesn't make sense, guys. The deficit is increasing. The amount of stimulus is increasing out there. Now, we get to 2020, 2021. We're going to forgive everything there, right? That's COVID. Should we do stimulus? Yes. Did we do stimulus? Yes. We did tons of stimulus. You can see it, guys. 14%, 11% of our GDP is how much deficit spending that we are doing, okay? Tons of stimulus. Totally forgiven. That's what we should do. But then 2022, guys, everything kind of comes back to normal. In fact, better than normal. Unemployment rates get to record low, 3.6. Guys, you get to 3.6. If you look at those deficit numbers I said before, deficits should be quite low at this point. No, our government decides to do expansionary fiscal policy, a lot of expansionary fiscal policy. We go to 5.3% deficit spending in regards to our GDP, the size of our economy. Our unemployment rate stays low into 2023. That's right. Our average so far has been around 3.6. It's a little higher right this moment, but it's been around 3.6. 
and look at that amount of stimulus, 5.7%. Guys, our size of our deficit right now is somewhere between our, our annual deficit, 1.5 to $1.7 trillion. Guys, things have changed since 2016, guys. And hey, guess what? We've had Democrats and Republicans. It's on both of them, guys. Things have changed since 2016 for both of, for all of our administrations. There's really three. There's Obama, there's Trump, and there's Biden. For all three of them, things changed, guys. They just started to go with deficit spending regardless of what the economy is doing. So what's happening in 2023, guys? Well, for the last two years, we've had inflation. And so what has the Fed done? They have raised those interest rates to try to bring inflation down. They're trying to reduce spending out there. But again, there is somebody fighting the Fed, and that is the U.S. government. Our deficits are at record levels, one point, like I said, five to $1.7 trillion. Now, not as a percent of our GDP, but still very high, very stimulus, stimulative as a percent of our GDP, okay? We are doing tremendous amounts of fiscal stimulus. So if you're wondering, hey, why is that unemployment rate not ticking down the way we are, or ticking up, I say, why is that the economy contraction cooling down, the unemployment rate kind of ticking back up? Why aren't we seeing those things? Why are we seeing the economy remaining strong, even with the Fed, Fed rate increases? It's because we do not live. Sorry, that's my bell right there. And that was the punchline. Here it comes, guys. Because we do not live in a Ceteris Parabis environment. Guys, a Ceteris Parabis environment is we change one thing and everything else we hold constant. We have a situation that not everything's held constant. Yes, the Fed is doing contractionary monetary policy, but the US government is doing expansionary fiscal policy at the same exact time. And they're doing a lot of expansionary fiscal policy and that's why we have such a weird little world out there where the Fed has done incredible amount of rate increases and the unemployment rate has remained low. And if you're wondering why, we've done a lot of fiscal stimulus. Hope that made sense to you. We'll see you in the next video.